When should you cite things? The simple answer is if it didn't completely come from your own brain, then you need to cite it. This includes both ideas and words. It can seem like a lot of work to do citations, but the more you get in the habit of it, the easier it can become. I get asked a lot, why does it matter? Is plagiarism just something I get in trouble for at school? And actually, one, plagiarism is an issue because you're stealing someone else's work and you need to think about if you were in their shoes, how you would feel if you put a lot of work into creating something, music, um, a movie, a book, an assignment, anything, and then someone else just came and took credit for the thing that you did. So when we cite things, we're just giving credit to the person who actually put in the initial work, and then we're able to use it. We just have to say, hey, I got some information from someone else and I'm letting you know so that you could go check out their stuff too. And as far as whether it's just a school thing, it's not. We're trying to teach you about it in school, just like we try to teach you about everything that we can. But this is becoming a huge issue right now in the music industry and then in apps like TikTok, where you have people who are creating things. And then other people who are creating things and finding those lines of who does this belong to, who initially came up with the idea, are you just using this and then working off of it or are you just outright stealing it? And I see in the next even few years that there's going to be a lot more legal ramifications for things like plagiarism and copyright infringement than there even is now. Because we live in a world where now we're super connected to everyone through the internet and through social media, you have the ability to access things that you never would have been able to access before. And that makes it so that this is becoming a more prevalent issue. I'm often asked what actually constitutes plagiarism? How do I know um, what I should avoid? There are several types of plagiarism, and I'm actually going to have you do an assignment off an article from Scribber, who does a really nice job explaining this concept. So, Streifkirk, who wrote the article, says that they fall under really three categories. When you're stealing someone's ideas, when you're taking someone's words, or when you're improperly citing things. And the improperly citing things is the least serious type of plagiarism because it shows that you tried to cite it but incorrectly cited it. The first two are much more serious and can hold higher ramifications. So after this video, you are going to be filling out a worksheet and going through the different types of plagiarism to make sure you fully understand that it's not just the copy-paste plagiarism, but instead this idea of using people's ideas or just not giving credit to them. So to create this video, I'm saying that I read this article from Scribber and that that is helping inform what I'm saying. Now I'm adding my own words and I'm talking about my own things but I'm still letting you know that it's not all just coming from my head that I did my research. So now you're saying, I get it. I know I shouldn't plagiarize. I know I need to cite my sources, but how? How do I cite my sources? It seems so overwhelming. Well, there are lots of different ways to cite sources and depending what you're doing, there's going to be different styles. So usually in English, we use MLA because that's typically what's used for things like literary and poetic analysis. But in a research paper and for our research project now, we're going to be using APA because that's the format typically used for that. There are also other types of formats that other content areas use and also just for specific types of writing. And that's something that either your professor or your boss or someone is going to tell you, or you could Google it and say, what type of citation do I use in a lab report? And then it's going to tell you what kind of citations you're going to need. I get asked a lot is, so can I use a citation maker? 
Yes, you can. But I've seen some very odd citations come out of Citation Maker. So it doesn't guarantee that your citation is correct. The first thing is that sometimes it can't find information, even though that information is super obvious if you were looking at it. Because essentially, it's a robot, it's scanning things, it's trying to figure things out, but you're a person. So for an article online, usually on a website, the website title will be right at the top, we can see it, but sometimes it's in a crazy font or it actually counts as a picture. And so it can't read that. Same with the author, which is usually right under the article title or all the way at the bottom. We also find the date and things at the bottom of the paper or the um, URL usually but sometimes it can't find it and sometimes it's in a different place so it would be obvious to you just reading it. And since you are reading it to do your work, chances are you're gonna see that information. I do have a form that I'm going to give you to help remind you what the citation formats are for APA that you can kind of carry as a cheat sheet. But I think it's super easy to do some of these basic citations without a citation maker. When it is helpful is when you have like four authors that are all contributing to this one book and you need to cite that and you're not sure how to do it. If you aren't sure how to do it though, it's much better to check out websites like Owl Purdue and Scribber that are going to help you know how to do it so that you can do it in the... As I said before, we're going to be using APA format, which I honestly think is one of the easiest formats that you could use for citation because it's very obvious and straightforward and primarily uses periods instead of other types of punctuation that can make some of the other forms confusing. Citing a book with one author is super easy. So we're going to put the author's last name and then comma and then we're going to put their first initial and a period. If we also have a middle initial for them, or especially if we have multiple people with the same last name and initial in a paper, you can put their middle initial and then a period after that. Then you're going to put parentheses in and put the date. So sometimes this is just a year that it's published. Sometimes we have the year and then comma and then the month and the day. And then outside of our parentheses, we're gonna put a period. We're going to put the title of our book in italics. And then we're going to put a period and then the publisher at a period. And that's it. We don't have to write anything else. So last name, comma, first initial, period, maybe middle initial, period, parentheses with the date in it, period, italicized title, period, publisher, period. And that's it, which is why you have to type all those things into a citation maker anyway. Usually you have to watch an ad and something like that to be able to copy it. It would be much easier to just do it on your own. to doing a website, guess what? It's pretty much exactly the same as doing a book. So if we have an author, which sometimes we might not, if we have an author, that's going to be the same. And then we're going to do the same thing with the date. So those are both the same. Then because we have an article instead of a book, the article is going to go in italics and then the website title, not in italics, and then the URL, and that's it. So it's pretty much exactly the same, um, just we have a little bit different information than we do for the Next comes how to cite an article, either from a database, so a journal or a newspaper, so an online source. But you're going to do a similar thing. You're going to put the last name, comma, the initials, period, 
and then the year, and then the title of the article. Then you're going to put the title of the journal or periodical or whatever it is. And this is where it gets different. You're going to put a comma after that, and then you're going to put volume, so V-O-L, and then you're gonna put a period and parentheses and then put what issue number it is. And this will say on it. Typically, this information is easy to find. Also, when using things like uh, Destiny and Gale and Marvel, lots of times they'll cite it for you if you click on citation and so you won't even have to do this. Um, but if you do, then you're going to put the issue comma, the page numbers that you're using, and then the URL. So this is definitely the most complicated one, but again, I have a cheat sheet for you that you can use when citing. The other thing that people forget to cite quite often is their images and graphs. So if you're citing an image or a graph, you're going to again put the last name of the person who it belongs to. Lots of times we don't know. So if we do a Google search and we can't find the information, you will put an N period D period saying we that you don't know. But then you're going to put the year and a period what it's called and oftentimes you can do that by right clicking it will just tell you what it's called and then in brackets which are like the parentheses that have the little flat thing on top and bottom you're going to put what format it is so typically it's going to be jpeg or ping file um, then period put what site you found it at or what museum you found it at its location, so where it was taken, um, and then the URL. So again, very The last two things are how to do the in-text citations that go with your quotes and paraphrasing and the reference list. There are three pieces to an in-text citation, which are the author's name or the organization's name if there isn't one particular author, the year and the page numbers or paragraph numbers if there are no page numbers. And there are a couple different ways you can do this, which you'll see in a second, either using the person's name in the quote and then putting the stuff at the end or putting all of it at the end. The reference list is just simply taking these citations and putting them under the heading references and putting them alphabetically by whatever is the first thing there. And what I'm having you do is an annotated reference list, which will ask you to write how you're using the source. So there's an example of that on the next page. And that's it. So if you have any other questions, please let me know. Definitely check out Al Purdue and Scriver, um, as well as returning to this video, as well as the cheat sheet I'm giving you. Those things should be really helpful uh, to look at while you're doing your project.